A20V main pump control systems. G'day, it's Luke here from Rackage Machinery. In this video, I'm going to explain the control system of these pumps. It's targeted towards the technicians who maintain these excavators in the field. It's applicable to several different model machines. First being the Terex Busaurus RH340B, CAT 6060s. The LR is disabled on the 6060, but I'll uh, point that out as we go through where it's applicable. And various models of Liebherr machines. Uh, Liebherr use different control pressures on their pumps, but the functionality remains the same. Some of the later 6060s are different control pressures as well. I'll explain them and point them out as I'm going through, but I'm just going to be using the RH340B configuration and pressure settings to describe it all. This is the first of a three-part series related to these pumps. The second one is the 6060 main pump calibration, which is an onboard pump tune-up procedure which we've developed in, uh, in part with Hycon Hydraulic Systems. Part three is 6060 travel deviation, which quite often is linked back to the poor calibration of these pumps. There's quite a bit of difference in the terminology you can find for the naming convention for these valves, depending on what manuals you read. We'll standardize it for this presentation. So on top, you've got your PST valve. Sometimes you might call it the HMIN, HMAX, but we'll call it the PST valve today. When the pump's installed, the DW valve will be the one on the right-hand side as you're looking at it. The DR valve is on the left-hand side. And the LR valve is tucked away underneath the DW valve. So the DR or pressure cutoff is the one you would be typically adjusting out in the field. So a good way to remember that is it's the one that's on its own with, without an adjustment underneath it. I'll be using a schematic of the pump to explain the function of the system through the presentation. However, the PST valve is really difficult to represent as a schematic symbol. That's visually intuitive on how it works. So I'll explain using this basic cross-section diagram. So inside the valve, you've got two concentric spools. There's a PST sleeve, and then inside of that is the feedback spool. So their main responsibility is to act as a variable orifice and control the MST signal that enters the valve by opening and closing this orifice. So in this state, we're showing the MST leakage at maximum, so the orifice is at its largest, so the MST pressure will be low as a result. But it relies on two inputs. It's got the PST signal and then the servo piston ramp. So it's a physical position of the servo piston which will assist in regulating that MST signal. So we'll just demonstrate it now with some PST signal causing the spool to lift up. And your MST signal will now be restricted. As a result of that, your pump will immediately come onto stroke. So your servo piston will move to the right and then we'll open that valve back up or that leakage, allowing some MST to leak back to tank. So in order to help me explain the H-min, H-max, I'll just briefly go over the Q-min, Q-max. And it, these are pretty obvious and um, a basic bit of information that most people know, but it will certainly help me explain the next slide. So here we've got the scale of your input and your output of the pump. So your main input is the PST pressure. So that's the operator demand and how that relates to the output of the pump in flow as liters a minute. So this scale here will correspond to the scale on the right of the pump output flow. If we were to wind in the QMAX screws, it will create a physical stop, which will limit the main pump flow. So here we've gone down below 650 litres a minute. Um, that means now the PST pressure at this point here and above is now redundant. It's The pump's reached its maximum flow by this point. Same goes for QMIN. If we wind that QMIN in, there's no pump flow below 50 litres a minute now, and this PST pressure is now redundant. It hasn't changed the relationship between any of this middle range. So at 38 bar, you'll get just over 550 litres a minute. That hasn't changed. And how that differentiates to the HMIN, HMAX of the PST valve. 
First one is the HMAX. It essentially does the same thing as a QMAX, but it's done hydraulically. The biggest difference is the HMIN. So when you adjust the HMIN, you're adjusting this 30 mil hex, which sits on top of the, um, the, the valve body, and it'll actually rotate the whole valve in and out of the pump. And what, what that will do is actually changes the whole scale of this pump in relationship to the output. So if we change, if we wind that out, it will actually increase the flow across all of the ranges of the PST input pressures. So we've just basically changed 28 bar from producing 380 litres a minute to 430 litres a minute, as an example. So just some key points on the PST valve. Essentially all it is is a variable orifice to bleed off your MST pressure. It uses two inputs, and that's the PST pressure, which enters this gallery here, and then the physical position of this servo piston, which acts on the bottom of the feedback spool. The H minute adjustment will change the output flow across the whole range when it's adjusted. What is MST? MST is this gallery on the outside of the pump that goes from DW across to the PST valve. So it's these hoses here on the actual pump. So the MST is just this 80 bar servo pressure, which is supplied via this orifice. It's regulated by the PST valve. So as that valve opens and closes, as explained in the previous slides, this pressure will rise and fall. So as it closes off, that pressure will uh, increase. Its main duty then is to act with this spring tension on the DW valve and it will compete with the 80 bar servo on the other side of the valve to either move it to the left or the right. I'm showing the pump here in Q half, so we're at 50% PST pressure, so 27 bar on these machines that run to 42 bar. At that position, you should get a delta P of 30 bar, so 30 bar differential between your servo and your MST pressure. On your later model 6060s, which have a 50 bar servo input, the 30 bar delta P still applies, so you should have 20 bar there. And on the Liebherr machines, it's 55 bar, so you should get 25 bar there. These pumps rely on three different inputs to vary the output. The first one being the PST signal, which is directly proportional to the operator demand. So if the operator is deflecting a joystick to 100%, the PSD signal will be 100% also. The XLR signal, this will also rise with demand like the PSD from the operator. Then we'll drop off as the engine RPM falls from excess load. The 6060s that have it, the LR disabled, will use this logic or very similar to regulate the PSD pressure. The servo pressure is a constant servo pressure supply which is available to swash the pump. When the pump pressure outlet exceeds the servo pressure, it will go over a check valve and then the outlet pressure will then take over this roll. So I'll just introduce the schematic that I'll be using to explain the functionality here. All the housings that are bolted together to form the pump are all indicated by the dotted lines here. So all the pressures that we'll be reading and using today the servo pressure on the right hand side, the XLR also on the right, PST up there on the top left, the MST uh, center top, and then your pump outlet pressure over there on the left. So here's the valves and their positions on the schematic. The PST valve, the DW valve, and the DR valve and the LR valve. In this slide, I'll show you the four valves that control the pump and what consequence they'll have to the pump depending on their position, whether they're pushed over to the left or to the right or raised or lowered for the PST and their ranking of priority. First in order of priority is the DR. And when the DR is pushed over to the left by the spring, it's inactive and it's allowing the pump to go to Qmax. When it's pushed over to the right, it's then forcing the pump to Qmin and that will override any other control system on that pump. The LR valve, when it's pushed over to the right, 
it will allow the pump to go to Qmax, provided the DR is inactive. And when it's forced over to the left, it's then forcing the pump to Qmin, and that will override the DW. Third in line of priority is the DW. When it's to the left, it's holding the pump in Qmin, and when it's shuttled over to the right, it's then demanding the pump goes to Qmax. Again, being third in priority, it, it can be overridden by the LR and the DR valve. The DR, uh, the DW valve is controlled by the PST valve, so that's fourth in line of priority. When the PST spool is lifted up, it's demanding the pump goes to Qmax. And the inverse is true for the the feedback spool, so that will that will create a balance between the two. So as that's lifted up, it will then force the pump to cum in somewhat. But that relationship between those two is pretty complicated, so we've tried to simplify it as best as I can here. Some helpful information with understanding these pumps is knowing that the role of all these valves all does the same thing. It either sends the pump to Qmin or to Qmax. It's why they do it is what, where it's different. And the PST valve is basically a pilot valve to control the DW. There's a, a simple way of thinking of that. I'm now going to build on the previous two slides and show what they're actually doing when they're in their Qmin or Qmax position. So this slide here, I'm going to explain the DW valve. And we're now showing that shuttled over to the left against the spring. And what that will do, the servo pressure is coming in from the right here, past this check valve. I'll just point out now that you'll notice that there is a constant servo pressure supply to the left-hand side of the servo piston. It's always trying to send it to Qmax. Um, that pressure is always there. It's not relying on any valve positioning to, to change that. So it's always trying to pressurize that side of the servo piston. I'll add more to that later on. So if we continue on now through this gallery up, now that the DW valve is shuttled over to the right, it's allowing oil flow to go through the LR. The LR is inactive at this point, so is the DR. And it's also sending the same pressure to the right-hand side of the servo piston. So just note that when the servo piston has the same color on either side of it, it's the same oil pressure that's uh, activating or filling that gallery. But because you've got the greater surface area of the servo piston, because it doesn't have the rod on that side, plus the spring tension, it will override the this side and force it to the left to cum in. So in my little checkbox we've got here, so we're just showing the DW valve in cum in. Now the DW, DR and LR in Qmax. So the DR and LR are still inactive, but I'll go into a bit more detail with that now. So the servo pressure is coming in here and it's trying to force the servo piston to the right to Qmax. Now if we go from this end we'll follow this gallery so the spring chamber is now open through the DR through the LR and because the DR is back at DW is back to the right it will actually drain that side of the servo piston to tank so here's our tank down here underneath the pump and that servo pressure will then override the spring tension and the low pressure in that side and force the pump to Qmax. So we've basically just covered off the DW, LR and DR all in their Qmax demanded position. Now we're showing the DR activated because we've reached pressure cutoff. So the pump outlet pressure is traveling up through here. It's now holding the servo uh, input check valve closed and it's taken over the role of that 80 bar servo. So we're now in the uh, left hand side of the servo piston. We've got our cutoff pressure there and it's also going up through the DR and also traveling into the other side of the servo piston. So as explained earlier, when the pressure is the same on both sides of this servo piston, the servo piston will move towards Qmin because of the spring and the greater surface area. Here we're showing the LR activated in a very simple form. So we've got high pump pressure in this phase. So the high pump pressure traveling up through here is also 
as before, sent to the left-hand side of the servo piston. Because the LR valve is moved to the left, this ore gallery, which is actually running past it, is now traveling through this part of the spool, through your DR, and into the right-hand side of the servo piston, so that's forcing the pump to come in. I'll explain more detail on how the LR works, because it's pretty complicated, but pretty interesting. And that'll be coming in a few extra slides. Now we're moving into the main part of the presentation where I'll show the whole pump activated in various stages. This first slide is the pump in its fully de-energized state. So the engine's shut down now. Just pay attention to the DW as I move to the next slide because that will immediately shuttle over to the left when the engine's running. So now we've started the engine and we've got 80 bar servo coming into the pump. We follow this gallery up it's now pushing on the right hand side of the dw to force it to the left and because there's no pst pressure there's maximum leakage of the mst so as the servo goes through this orifice there is very little pressure on this side as the leakage is leaking all uh, the pst is leaking it all off the tank so there's no resistance in this spring chamber here to force it to the right and if we follow that servo pressure again, we know, of course, it's going to the left-hand side of the servo piston, like it always does. But we follow, continue to follow this gallery. The DW shuttle to the left will then go through the LR as well and the DR, and then put that same pressure into the right-hand side of the servo piston, plus the spring, plus the greater service area, moves it to the left to cumin. In this state, we're showing it at pump full flow with no output load. So the PST pressure is at 100%. The operator's pulled on a joystick, but maybe the servo switch is off. So the, your MCV spools aren't actuating, so all that pump flow is returning to tank. So the PST pressure comes in, lifts your PST spool up to the top, and that then creates the maximum amount of restriction. So it reduces the leakage through the PST valve. So your MST pressure comes right up to a high percentage of your 80 bar. There's still some leakage there, there always will be. So across this orifice, the leakage is minimal. So the pressure then builds up on this side plus the spring and then we'll force the DW to the right. Now if we again follow the servo that enters the pump from the right, it will go to the right hand side of the pump and force it to Q max. But if we back follow it from this side of the servo piston, we'll follow this pathway. DR is inactive. The LR is inactive. Now the DW is shuttled to the right, and that will then drain this gallery or the right hand side of the servo piston to tank. So it'll allow the pump to go to Q max. So we're at maximum flow right now. So now we're showing the pump pressure at 320 bar, which is the setting of the DR adjustment so dr or pump cutoff is just becoming activated if we follow the pump outlet pressure through this internal gallery it all it goes all the way down here and then up to the dr and actually activates the dr by forcing it to the right as explained previously the servo that would ordinarily come in through this check valve is now held shut by the higher pressure on the left hand side of that check valve the 320 bar is in this left hand end of the servo piston we're still at q max at the moment so this is just at the point of dr becoming activated so if we continue to follow this pathway now that this is shuttled over and because of the override it doesn't matter what the dw or dr or lr are doing it right now it, this one will take control and it will send pressure to the left hand side of the servo piston and this like i said it's just the the beginning of pressure cutoff the next slide will show you when it's fully active. So now the pump is pushed back to Q min and it will maintain 320 bar all the while there's operator demand there. It won't necessarily be on the Q min stop, but it will be at a point that will supplement the leakage to maintain 320 bar. So it might be just off Q min. So this is the first of three slides to explain the LR. 
couple of things to note. We've got the 42 bar XLR pressure coming in at the moment, so we're at full demand by the operator. The engine hasn't begun to bog down as yet. We're at high pressure at the moment, so we've got 250 bar, we're at Qmax, full operator demand and full XLR pressure. So this a moment like this would only be a split second on the machine before it would begin to activate. So it's not active at the moment. What you see here is the 250 bar in the pump outlet pressure enter the right hand side of the servo piston. And what the servo piston has is a small orifice and gallery through the piston itself into a small feedback spool plunger type setup. So it's, it acts like a small hydraulic cylinder. And then it's trying to force on this lever here, which pivots in the center, which pushes on the valve. So as the 42 bar XLR pressure is at max, that plus the spring pressure will hold this in the inactive position. And there won't be enough force there at this point. But there will be in a minute when the RPM starts to fall. So I'm showing it here in the fully active position. The XLR pressure is dropped right off because the RPM has bogged right down. So there's very little pressure there to act with the spring uh, to resist the, uh, the, the force of this uh, feedback piston pushing the rocker over and forcing the LR over. Now if we follow the path, we've got 250 bar up through here. It's trying to force the pump to Qmax and it still is at this point. But if we follow this gallery around now that the LR's moved over, we bypass the DW as that's been overridden by the LR. And pressure travels through here, through the DR, which is inactive at this point, and then to the right hand end of the servo piston. Now we're partially active, so your RPM has begun to recover. The XLR pressure has started to climb again. The pump outlet pressure is still the same, so we've still got 250 bar in here, but because we've started to shuttle back away from Qmax, the leverage on this rocker has reduced, and in combination with the XLR pressure starting to climb again, this valve will begin to modulate back to inactive there's so many factors that contribute to the XLR function. It's um, really difficult to illustrate it uh, individually. So that's why I'll we'll try to break it across three slides here. So I'm only showing the LR in the fully switched position as I, as I was the DW and DR. In reality, they, they can vary those positions considerably. So the LR, now that we've lost all that leverage here, it would take a lot more pressure to force that over and then it will battle the XLR pressure here. So if I can just summarize all that, the factors that influence the LR is the XLR pressure input, which is controlled by the engine RPM plus the operator demand, the spring setting of the LR valve, the pump outlet pressure, which of course is acting on this rocker here, and the servo piston position. So that will change the leverage that you have to force that rocker. So it would be a, take a lot less pressure to push the rocker over when it's right up here than it does as it comes back. So yeah, very complicated, but it's all contributing to the um, the hyperbolic power curve that these pumps boast. And yeah, it's a very, very complicated thing, um, but it's been made redundant on the 6060 model machines. So if you were to get a 6060, you would find that the LR adjustment is actually wound fully in and there is no XLR input anymore on those pumps. So this, this whole function is disabled. Now I'll recap on the A20VO control system valves with some simple definitions, what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. The first we have is the PST valve, and what it does is controls the DW valve. How does it do that? By restricting the MST oil, and then it shuttles the DW valve to the right by doing that. Why does it do it? When the operator demands pump flow for the functions, it'll send PSD signal to it. Next, we've got the DW valve, and what it does is increase and decrease the pump displacement. How does it do it? Directs flow to the servo piston or drains it to tank, so it'll switch between those two. And what does it do it? it when it's instructed by the PSD valve. Next, we've got the DR valve, and that will decrease pump displacement. How does it do it? 
It will direct pump outlet pressure to the right hand side of the servo piston. Why does it do it? When the pump outlet pressure exceeds the adjusted DR setting. And last we've got the LR valve and that will decrease pump displacement also. How does it do it? It will direct pump outlet pressure to the right hand side of the servo piston. And why does it do it? When the pump load, so that's pressure and flow, causes the RPM to drop. That concludes the A20VO main pump control system presentation by Rackage Machinery. This will provide a suitable introduction for the next video being the 6060 main pump calibration and travel deviation troubleshooting. Big thanks to Ben at Hycon Hydraulic Systems in Perth for the guidance with this information. If you've got any questions or feedback, um, by all means comment wherever I've shared this or you can direct message me on LinkedIn or Facebook or here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.